In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Orca Slicer with your Bamboo Lab 3D printer to create incredibly customized 3D prints you just can't create any other way. And we'll touch on why you might want to make the switch anyway to preserve your 3D printing ecosystem moving forwards. Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse and welcome back to our 3D Printing 101. Now before we begin, it's important to know the history and backstory of Orca Slicer, Bambi Studio and Prusa Slicer and why I'm making this video. So essentially the Orca Slicer project is based on the Bamboo Studio project, which in turn is based on the Prusa Slicer project, which is in turn based originally on Slicer, which was an open source 3D printing slicing engine from way back in the day. And all of these modern slicing programs owe their heritage and their functionality to that original program. So because that original program Slicer was open source, these programs are also open source as per the license. So despite the fact that Bamboo Lab 3D printers are proprietary, Bamboo Studio is open source as per the original license, which has allowed Orca Slicer to come into existence. Now, why would I use something that's a derivative or a derivative or a derivative in the first place? Well, Orca Slicer, because it has an active community around it, has heaps of cutting edge features in it. And I'd say it's designed more for power users than beginner 3D printing enthusiasts. As many of you would know, I'm into building these tiny ant weight class combat robots. These weigh only 150 grams. So complete control over the slicing parameters to make the chassis is really, really important. So that's why I switched to Orca Slicer and I've quickly found that it's my favorite slicer moving forward. So I thought I'd make a tutorial to show you how you can use Orca Slicer with your Bamboo Lab 3D printers, because you might've thought it's a bit difficult, but it's actually really easy to do. And of course, it would be a miss for me to make this video without addressing the recent Bamboo Lab controversy about implementing security controls using their cloud service. And look, I recorded a whole chunk of this video, giving them the benefit of the doubt, saying that it's within their right to protect their cloud servers because they pay for them, they maintain them for traffic that isn't authorized. But it's only after I recorded the main video that I was made aware of Bamboo Lab's intention to lock down land mode as well with the security checks. And in my opinion, that's not really necessary. Their reasoning for it is pretty weak, saying that something could come through the back door like a Trojan horse virus or that sort of thing and control a printer through the local area network. I really don't buy that. In response to the community's uh, feedback, they have announced that there'll be a variation of land mode available that will not implement this security feature. It's definitely not perfect, but I think it's a fair compromise other than moving just to using SD cards, which is still possible with everything disconnected from the network and something I may consider doing in future. But I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. But otherwise, let's move on to using Orca Slicer. So first things first, you'll need to grab Orca Slicer. Now, this can be a little bit confusing because there's a lot of unauthorized websites for Orca Slicer. Personally, I would say go to the GitHub. That is the most reliable source of the latest and greatest version of Orca Slicer. You can even get the nightly builds if you're feeling adventurous. But honestly, the latest stable release is the way to go. So go ahead and download the version that's suitable for your operating system, install it, and then open up Orca Slicer. So here in Orca Slicer, you notice that it's very familiar. It is very similar to Bamboo Studio with a similar clean layout and really easy to learn user interface. Now, I really prefer this over Prusa Slicer. I find Prusa Slicer to be a bit confused, a bit um, muddled, but uh, the clean layout of Bamboo Studio and thus Orca Slicer is really quite nice. So they haven't done too much. They've done a light reskin, but really what we're in here for in Orca Slicer are the additional settings you get access to. But first we need to connect Orca Slicer to the Bamboo Lab printer that has been turned onto land mode. And if you haven't done that yet, you just navigate through the settings menu to land mode and it will log you out of the cloud service. And to connect to it, you wanna to go to device. And then under printer, you should see from the same network, the printer that is sitting there ready to be uh, paired up. So select A1 mini. That's the printer I'm going to be using for this tutorial. And then you want to put in the access code that will show in the LAN mode only window on your Bamboo Lab printer. Once you do that, hit confirm. And then there you go. You can see that the A1 mini is now connected to Orca Slicer. I can control all the different settings and I can go slice in uh, Orca Slicer and send directly to the printer over the local area network, not over the cloud. So what are these advanced experimental settings that I like so much in Orca Slicer? Well, I'll be honest, there's not too many that I use, but it's enough to have made the switch 
very much necessary. So how I view it is that Orca Slice is like a power user slicing engine, whereas you've got Bambi Studio and Prusa Slicer, they're more designed to make slicing easy and accessible. There's a lot of really powerful settings in it, but you're unlikely to send a print with bad settings that's gonna fail. Like you can still send a print with support material disabled when it should have been enabled. That's still very possible, but there's big warnings being like, you probably need support material. Whereas in Orca Slicer, there are some settings in here that you can disable that really will ruin a print unless you know exactly what you're doing. But on the other hand, there's some settings in here that really should be in the other programs. It's just that Orca Slicer's development is a lot quicker and they shove new experimental features in a lot quicker than the more slow but considerate uh, Bambi Studio and Prusa Slicer. And of course, this is just a date of recording. This stuff changes so fast. There's new versions of all these programs constantly. So by the time you watch this in a year's time, it's probably completely different. But these are the settings that I just think are really, really valuable. So under the quality tab, there's not too many differences initially. It's like layer height, you've got line width, that's pretty standard. Uh, both Orca Slicer and Bambi Studio have scarf seams now, which are a new kind of seam that's more hidden than traditional, sort of like sort of tapers them off into the print. Pretty neat. But down the bottom here, we have these bridging and overhang settings. And this is where this section is what's very different in Orca Slicer to Bambi Studio. So what I really like that's built in to Orca Slicer is this bridge counterboards section. I've talked about different design approaches to supporting counterboards in the past. And in fact, it's a whole section in my ebook, The Ultimate Guide to 3D Printing Tips and Tricks for FDM and FFF, which you should definitely go check out. Links in the video description below. But if you want a really quick and dirty way in the slicer to support counterboards, well, in Orca Slicer, you can do that. With the bridge cannibal section, you have partially bridged and sacrificial layer. I can show you how it works with this part here. So if I scroll down the layers, you can see that there's a, a bore and then it forms into these uh, counterbores that are unsupported. They are not gonna support themselves as the print forms. They're gonna fail. So normally what I do is I would model in a sacrificial layer. All right, there's a few other tricks you can do, but that would basically bridge across underneath them so when they form, they don't fall over and you don't need support material. What's really cool in Orca Slicer is you can actually do that straight in the slicer. So you have partially bridged and sacrificial layer. So partially bridged will just create some bridges in the areas it needs. So you can see just, it's making just a few bridges here that then can support those holes. So underneath you can see, it's just sort of holding the edge of them. It's not gonna be perfect. It's still gonna be pretty, pretty rough in terms of the surface finish, but it's not gonna fail completely. But if you wanna bridge it completely with a sacrificial layer, you can do that and it does effectively what I would do in the 3D modeling software. It builds a single layer bridge. You can see one layer there that builds on top of that, that you just punch through at the end with a, with a drill or that sort of thing to clean out that bore and you don't need support materials. Another setting that's been added into Orca Slicer that's pretty useful is the make overhangs printable option. Now I believe this is ported over from Cura. I could be wrong, let me know in the comments below if I, if I am. But basically this will modify the geometry to make overhangs printable. So this sphere, for example, as it prints, it gets down to an impossible overhang at the bottom of the sphere. And look, that would just print absolutely rubbish and look terrible. But if we change the make overhangs printable option and enable that, it will actually modify the geometry to make this sphere now printable. See right at the bottom there, it's actually no longer right to the tip of a sphere. It actually comes out at about a 45 degree angle and then the sphere forms. And this will make the sphere printable. It will look good, it'll stick to the build plate, and it won't have any overhung layers that will droop down and fail. But it's no longer a perfect sphere, is it? Because it's modified the geometry. So this can work great for some models that you don't mind if the geometry modifies a little bit, because you just only a tiny change. But if you have to have a dimensionally accurate model, then it's not a great idea to enable this, because it's obviously gonna change it, and that might change how that print fits in with other things. And you might, in that case, want to use support material or change your geometry in your design phase so you don't need it. But I'll be honest, the main reason I switched to Orca Slicer was this setting right here at the bottom of the strength tab. Ensure vertical shell thickness and the ability to say none. But what the heck does this setting actually do? Well, admittedly, it took me quite a while to fully figure it out and why disabling it didn't. Uh, but I'm gonna try to be as concise and clear as possible. So with this print, I have enabled two wall loops. That The idea is there's gonna be two perimeters around the print. So I'm gonna slice this model, right? I've got no infill, by the way, I've disabled infill, it's at zero. So you can see as it builds, it should be two walls, but it's not just two walls, is it? Look at that. What's that purple line doing? It's three walls. And then it comes up 
And then at the top, it starts to do three walls again. And then four walls. And then more and more and more, and then you get solid infill, and then you get the print. So, that purple line there, that additional perimeter, that is the ensure vertical shell thickness function. What it's doing is because the print is at an angle, there's an overhang, the horizontal uh, cross-sectional thickness of that line gets thinner because it's at an angle. So it's adding additional perimeters to thicken it up again. And this does benefit print stability, print quality, and uh, that sort of thing. It makes prints more reliable. You're less likely to have overhang, overhanging edges that sort of fall away from each other, but it's adding material and weight. And for these little robots, that's not on. We need to remove as much weight as possible. And in my case, I actually like to slice these models for these prints with a very thick single perimeter and I disable this. So let me show you how that actually works in Orca Slicer. I'd go to one wall like that. And then for quality, I would actually turn the outer wall to 0.8 like that. So a nice thick single perimeter. But even with that single thick perimeter, it is still doing that ensure vertical shell thickness perimeter. So I'm going to go to that setting and say none. And now it has none. So it builds up with no additional perimeters at all to the top. However, be warned, this setting cannot be disabled in Bambi Studio and Prusa Slicer completely for a good reason. Without it, some prints will fail. So with this sphere, for example, you can see at the bottom here, as it's building up, there is a significant overhang between those perimeters. Uh, to the point where it's probably going to be impossible to form properly. But the setting is overly cautious, which means that certain prints don't need it and they will still get that perimeter. So if I leave it on for this cone, for example, which has a very gentle taper, and I slice that, you can see that it's got that purple line running up that print, like so. And it will add an extra perimeter and a tiny bit of extra weight, it, but it's just not necessary. So I'm gonna say none, and then slice again. And you can see, I've just got a single perimeter coming up that print. For me, being able to disable the setting entirely and rely on my geometry and other settings is crucial for how I print these chassis for these robots. And it's, I don't know why you can't fully disable it in the other softwares, probably because it's, it's, it can make the prints fully fail, but it was this key setting that made me investigate Orca Slicer. And then I, from here, discovered all the other things it can do, which has made me stick around. But just in case you're not convinced yet about giving Orca Slicer a good try, then I want to show you what crazy stuff you can do with it. This is the project file for my new little ant weight called Death Ray, uh, because it looks a bit like a manta ray, but it's got a huge spinning blade. Death Ray makes sense. And this is full of crazy tricks that just like four or five years ago, it would have been really, really, really hard to do, if not impossible. And it's combining all of the tricks I've shown on the channel up to this point with slicing, and many tricks, again, that are in my ebook, The Ultimate Guide to 3D Printing Tips and Tricks. Starting off with modifiers. So I created specific bodies within Autodesk Fusion to use as modifiers in Orca Slicer. And what I did is I assigned these modifiers by saying change type modifier by bringing all the bodies in as one file. And then I've assigned these bodies a different infill percentage. So that's because these bores in the frame, I want to be fully supported and I want lots of material around them. And similarly, the front of the robot here, I want the front to be very tough with lots of armor and the back, but I want the rest of the frame to be very lightweight because again, we're trying to hit a specific weight limit with this chassis. And if I go to the G code preview and scroll down, you can see just how significant these changes have been on this file. There's a lot going on. I'll try to walk through every step. So the modifiers I've assigned an 100% concentric infill, which means they're solid. Uh, and that's because these areas, I want to have 100% strength. I want it to be as strong as possible for the armor. But for the rest of the frame, you see I've got this infill here. Now, this is a fairly new infill called, called Crosshatch. And I've started to use this over Cubic because I find it prints more stably, especially at very, very low, uh, very sparse infill percentages. It's actually just bridging across itself with slight overhang changes. And it comes out to straight lines and they alternate 90 degrees. So you know, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, like that. And it comes up to the top. And this sort of thing is only possible with modifiers. I've used them to make certain areas 100% fill and certain other areas are very, very sparse. But there's some other strange stuff going on, isn't there? Like these crazy rotating uh, triangles here for the bores. 
Now, why the heck would I do that? And what setting is that? Well, these are known as polyholes. And I believe this setting was ported over from Super Slicer into Orca Slicer. Super Slicer, again, is a very powerful slicing program, but I just, I prefer Orca Slicer for the UI. And the setting to convert to polyholes turns these circles into triangles. And what's really cool is that these triangles are spinning around because the setting for polyhole twist is enabled. And the reason I've done this is because I'm gonna put some screws into these bores. And I want it to be as strong as possible. So not only do I have some modifiers, I have these modifiers here to add 100% infill. I have the poly holes to make that bore really, really thick and also a bit rough for, this, for the screws to bite into. And to show you the differences, I've got the poly hole here next to a normal bore without any of the messing around with the modifiers or that sort of thing. And you can see as they build up the differences, like this hole here, it's not supported by anything. The infill misses it. Now I do have a single outside perimeter of 0.8, so it's still pretty thick, but there's nothing supporting it as it builds up until it gets to the top and it starts being secured in place with solid infill. I haven't bothered doing it with these ones because they're actually like almost superfluous holes for design, but for these main frame ones that I want to be able to reuse again and again and again, I've put a lot of effort into making them as strong as possible. And then last but not least, the keen-eyed viewers among you will notice that the brim looks different in this. It's not a solid brim on the outside for adhesion, these are what's known as mouse ears. And this has been, again, used in many different slicing programs, but it's not in Bambi Studio yet. And this lets you hold down the areas of the print that are most likely to start warping. So generally sharp points. So for example, this point here, the print is held down. These little uh, wedges at the back are held down and the corners are held down. These tiny little amounts of support. And the reason you do this over a normal brim is quite simply because it's easier to remove. I don't care too much about the material use, because it's not a huge amount anyway, but mouse ears are easier to remove after the print's complete than a continuous brim around the entire model. And there you have it. That's how to use the latest Orca Slicer with Bamboo Lab 3D printers on the local area network. This setup, this ecosystem will never change uh, unless a Windows operating systems invalidates my ability to use that version of Orca Slicer, it's locked down. It cannot change in time and I like that. If you found this video useful, then maybe consider subscribing to Maker's Muse, where it's my aim to empower your creativity through technology. And once again, all of these tips and more are in my latest and greatest ebook, The Ultimate Guide to 3D Printing Tips and Tricks. Links in the video description below. Catch you later, guys. Bye.